took some uh, urine and blood analysis and they, they started talking to me about alcoholism. Now, I don't drink. I, I used to have a drink or two now and again, but they were convinced I was an alcoholic because my liver enzymes were elevated. Then we got around to a discussion about caffeine. It turned out that I was drinking anywhere from three to four grams of caffeine a day. A typical cup of coffee is maybe you know, 200, 500 milligrams. You can kill yourself drinking too much caffeine. Um, and but I it has caffeine. So what's caffeine doing? Caffeine is causing the liberation of adrenaline from your adrenals, these two little marble-sized glands above your kidneys. That tends to activate the so-called sympathetic nervous system, make you a little bit more prone to move, um, bring some alertness to your body, if you, uh, so to speak. And then you simultaneously, it's causing the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine from this little cluster of neurons called locus ceruleus that we talked about before. So the brain is being hosed with a little bit of epinephrine as we speak right now. In addition, it's triggering a, a dopamine increase, but not by triggering the release of dopamine directly. Caffeine increases the sensitivity of dopamine receptors. So whatever dopamine is floating around in your system and my system, the caffeine is amplifying that effect, not necessarily in, by making it a longer effect by making the intensity a little bit higher. The other thing that um, caffeine does, and this is perhaps the most important one, is that it effectively prevents the action of a molecule called adenosine. Adenosine is a molecule that builds up the longer that you are awake. And then when you sleep, adenosine gets pushed back down to a minimal level. Adenosine essentially is a readout of fatigue overall. So if we were to stay up for two days, adenosine levels would be very high. So in terms of a practical tool, I do try and restrict my caffeine intake or at least most of it to the early part of the day. I'll stop drinking caffeine sometimes, usually around three or 4 p.m. I don't drink any high amount of caffeine after 4 p.m. and generally not coffee. But when you wake up in the morning, depending on how well and how long you slept, your levels of adenosine might be zeroed out and you feel really alert, or you might have a, a small amount of adenosine hanging around. If you drink caffeine right away, what happens is caffeine acts as what's called a competitive, uh, it, it, well, let, let's just keep it simple. It essentially binds to the receptor that that adenosine would normally it's occupy. It's an antagonist. It, it's, it's a functionally, it's an antagonist, but it's what we call a competitive agonist because it binds, it binds, so it's an agonist, but it com, it outcompetes the adenosine so the adenosine can't dock at those receptors. So that's great because you start to wake up, but then around two or 3 p.m., as that caffeine wears off, the adenosine that's still around binds to those receptors and you get the afternoon crash. So one way that you can avoid the, the afternoon crash or at least uh, offset uh, quite a bit of it is to wait 90 to 120 minutes after you wake up to ingest any caffeine. And so adenosine uh, lowers. Adenosine will continue to be cleared from your system in the early mm -hmm. part of the day. Caffeine, ha because of its effects on adenosine and because of adenosine's relationship to uh, the way that nerve cells connect to, vasc to the vasculature, to blood vessels and capillaries, that when they stop drinking caffeine, they actually get changes in blood flow and they get headaches. And so you're, you're either hyper perfusing the brain and, and head. And let, so there's, there's a compartment in which uh, below, between the brain and skull sort of, I don't want to get too, too into details, called the meninges. And it's very heavily vascularized. Your brain is very heavily vascularized. And it, it's sort of tricky for chronic caffeine users. The blood vessels are actually dilate when they, people drink caffeine because they're caffeine adapted. For people that are not caffeine adapted and just have a cup of coffee and they never drink uh, caffeine, the blood vessels constrict. And that's because of the way that adenosine and these systems uh, tend to regulate themselves over time. So if you've been drinking a lot of caffeine and you stop, you can get pretty brutal caffeine headaches because of the changes in blood flow to your brain. And that takes a little bit of time. And generally, yeah, and, you, and generally tapering by mixing decaf with calf and then um, you know tapering off. Uh I think some people listening might be questioning their coffee in bed now. Uh. Oh, well, it depends on how long you stay in bed. I mean, and, and listen, the 90 to 120 minutes, you can ratchet toward that. You can try and push it out 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It is important to hydrate early in the day too. Caffeine is very dehydrating. It causes a, the, for various reasons that relate to the, its effects on the kidneys, you start to excrete sodium and potassium and the electrolytes. And those, uh, the action potential, the firing of neurons that we were talking about earlier is mediated by the entry of sodium into the nerve cells. And to some extent, the, the exit of potassium, it's a, it's a coordinated dance there. You need electrolytes for your nerve cells to fire. So when you're dehydrated, you can't think as well. You can't function as well at the neuromuscular junction. So the first thing I do when I wake up is drink water. I mean, you should hydrate first thing in the morning. Obviously you should use the bathroom too, if you need to do that. But then 
push out that caffeine intake a little bit. And it, yeah, it, it's a little uncomfortable at first, but, uh, and some people don't experience an afternoon crash or people that are going back for more caffeine in the afternoon, they often find that they can drop or have the amount of caffeine that they're drinking in the afternoon, which then has a nice cascade on the sleep system and the ability to fall asleep. It, you can create a system of, you know, wired and tired in your brain and body that comes from excessive caffeine intake. Um, you know, I think it makes sense to not overindulge in caffeine. Uh, and you know, over the years I've, I'll tell you a story very briefly in graduate school, I, um, I became jaundiced. I was, I, so I went to the doctor and I, you know, I took some uh, urine and blood analysis and they, they started talking to me about alcoholism. Now I don't drink. I, I used to have a drink or two now and again, but they were convinced I was an alcoholic because my liver enzymes were elevated. Then we got around to a discussion about caffeine. It turned out that I was drinking anywhere from three to four grams of caffeine a day. A typical cup of coffee is maybe you know, 200 to 500 milligrams. You can kill yourself drinking too much caffeine. And I wasn't on my way to death, but I was drinking far too much caffeine. But I prided myself on long work hours back then. And it was really bad, I think. Um, and it was hard to taper that back. Now I drink uh, usually a cup or two of coffee early in the day. Yerba mate is my preferred source of caffeine. Some days I don't drink any coffee. So you can really overdo it. I don't think you're going to burn out your adrenals. I think you're going to burn. I think you're going to be stressed too often. You're just burning up energy. And we hear about fuel energy in the body, something you know far more about than I do, the utilization of fuel energy. But neurons in our nervous system have a sort of what I would call neural energy, the ability to focus, the ability to stay engaged. That's based on the dopamine in the noradrenaline system. And if you are chronically in a state of go, go, go. And, and so I guess the point is that with excessive intake of caffeine or stimulants of any kind, nicotine, caffeine, you're going to run into a problem where you'll feel lousy without it. You'll start to feel a little bit more depressed. And and um, for people who have a underlying issues with OCD or who have underlying anxiety, um, for people that tend to ruminate, for people that tend to have insomnia, you know, it makes sense. You're just ingesting far too much, many stimulants. Yeah. 